we went out to Frankfurt 76 for the opening of the Rolling Stones tour and um, of course everybody who's on the tour uh, from the journalist side is going to out rock and roll each other so uh, the first thing that happens is we all go to Charles Shaw Murray's room and he, he swings open the door and there on the table is everything from the minibar so we start downing this and it turns of course it's turning into I can get I'm doing my Hunter Thompson thing better than you and, and Charlie's rolling up a spliff after spliff the object being to get everybody out of it so that they can't actually work and uh, there's whoever from the evening news and the other one from the evening standard whatever the standard was called in those days and they're kind of not they're being promised exclusive interviews with Mick both of them <laughs> So they're shadowing each other so that neither of them can actually tip the other one. It was all very funny. After the concert, we get invited up to uh, Keith and Ron's suite. And it's this giant Rococo Baroque room with kind of 14 foot ceilings. And, and in the middle of the room is a flight case with the top off. And there's this giant stereo in it. And it's pumping away with reggae of some kind and R&B and all this stuff. And Keith is sitting in what you can only call a throne, draped over it, <laughs> you know, very limply. And he's got a block of turquoise about this long, flat on the top, all rough underneath. So you can't put it down and it will tip over. And on top of, top of this flat surface is like this Himalayan chain of cocaine. He's got a little silver tube on its chain. And as he's talking, he's just, you know, going like this and then just do a bit of that. And, then, and, and there's about eight journalists surrounding him from all over Europe. And he's just pontificating on the biggest nonsense going. It's very funny. And you're just thinking like, this is so boring. And then he'll come out with this great soundbite out of nowhere. And uh, there's a point at which I looked at the stone and that uh, this mound has just disappeared. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> it's like, how much has he just put into it? Like, Nothing changes. He's still talking in the same old way. He's still kind of like this. And, um, and I'm kind of bored. So I'm watching around and like Ronnie's over on a couch and he's talking to Charlie Murray and so forth. And, and then uh, there's, you can, suddenly you can feel this energy around where I am with Keith and all that. And, and I look over and there's, Keith has got this, he's got this little piece of cardboard. He's chopping out like eight lines. I was like, oh, there's eight of us. And they're all the journalists are going, Keith's going to get us high. And so I'm just thinking, if there's one thing that's not going to happen, is Keith is going to get you high. And sure enough, all eight lines disappear. And at which point, Charles has come over. And, uh, and he's starting to roll a spliff. So of course he's Keith's best new friend. And Ron comes over and he hands Keith a piece of cut paper and written on it, because I can see from my angle is, you're talking to Charles Shaw Murray. And Charles has just put down the new album. Keith draws, I didn't think much of your interview. And <laughs> Charles, <laughs> that's okay Keith, my friends don't think much of it either. Is you need to widen your circle of friends. <laughs> and then Charles, you know, just lights up this spliff, has a good smoke, and then hands it off to Keith. Keith proceeds to smoke the whole damn thing until it gets to the end, and then he passes it off to whoever's next to him. And somewhere in all of this, I go, So, Keith, have you ever heard of a band called the Sex Pistols? Nah. Uh, they think that you're really old and you're in the way and you ought to just stop. <laughs> it was like this rage just builds up behind him. It's like, we're the Rolling Stones and we'll stop when we want to. <laughs>